After a slow start, global economic growth prospects have improved. However, with 49% of the world's population heading to the polls in this year, including our export markets, a wait-and-see attitude continues to prevail, further complicated by the ongoing conflicts in Russia and the Middle East. In South Africa, the recent results from the elections and subsequent creation of the Government of National Unity have driven positive sentiment towards this country. But uncertainty still lingers in respect of policy execution. Inflation rates have continued to trend downward, allowing central banks to consider cutting interest rates. We expect the Federal Reserve, the European Central Bank, the Bank of England, and South African Reserve Bank, among others, to start lowering official or policy interest rates during the remainder of this year. The initial policy rate cuts will mark the end of the most aggressive rate hiking cycle in four decades. With inflation rates retreating and interest rate cuts imminent, the global economy is expected to maintain its momentum throughout the end of this year. However, it is worth noting that although South Africa's CPI has been trending downwards, the mining CPI in this first half was higher than in the second half of last year, on the back of elevated electricity prices, which reflect the NASA's increase of 12.7%, which was effective in April, which is really also complemented by high cost of lending and trade financing due to elevated coke and refined petroleum costs due to the increase in brand crude prices. Following a weak start to the year due to subdued demand in Asia and Europe and lower natural gas prices, thermal coal prices recovered in the second quarter of this half. On the back of tightening sanctions on Russia, the Middle East tensions, disruptions in the U.S. of export calls to India. And then, obviously, the real issues that we experience here at home in the South African main export corridor to RBCT. Iron ore prices saw a steady decline from January to March as the sentiment was impacted by the fading optimism and uncertainty surrounding the China steel demand. Prices recovered slightly in April and May on the back of the improved demand of steel, both inside and outside of China. However, these gains were short-lived. As we look at the new minerals, in particular copper and manganese, we have been looking at these prices and monitoring the progression of these fundamentals. In the first half, copper remained quite strong, as a result of improving investor sentiment and optimism around potential global economic growth, which has obviously been expected, and then manganese prices also rebounded significantly due to supply-side constraint, reassuring us that our strategy is on the right track. Looking at the home front, we are pleased to report that TFR and industry collaboration have improved. As such, we remain cautiously optimistic for the second half of the year that 3FR will perform at the 50 million tons per annum, which are levels which are guided by them and will continue to respond with agility. We saw an increase in the coal domestic sales in the second quarter of this year. And this is due to the higher equipment availability at the Waterberg power stations. However, this only partly offsets the weak demand we saw in the first quarter. And you'll recall this is a problem that we're coming with within you know, the previous year. However, as you can see from the bottom graph, you can see growth of our export sales on the back of alternative means of evacuating our product offshore. Moving on to our operating performance, we're very pleased to report that this week 
we have achieved two consecutive years of zero fatalities across all our operations. As the chief safety officer in the organization, I recognize our team's focus on the five keys of safety and continue to encourage them to conduct robust root cause analysis for all incidents so that we don't experience repeats. And we also want to see demonstration daily from our teams of hashtag Ketaoku Pepa, safety always commitments. And we expect to see this across the organization, underground, on surface, in this office, every day. We do strive for zero harm. Our call operations team has consistently demonstrated resilience in navigating a dynamic operating environment. However, due to the low demand, mainly in the first quarter, as I've mentioned as well, coupled with several logistical challenges we have seen, we have experienced 12.7% decline in coal production from 22 million tons to about 19 million tons in this first half. Given these logistical constraints that we've experienced, it is important to remember that the design construct of the coal business is optimized to perform at 50 million tons, with 8 to 12 million tons per annum of airports by rail to RBCT. So there is, however, a threshold below which even your most stringent of course containment will be rendered ineffective. So now let's look at where we are. Compared to the current operating levels of 42.5 million tons, which is 7.5 million tons below optimal levels, with stockpiles exporting 5 to 6 million tons per annum, some are railed through RBCT, and we've got growing volume going to alternative ports, which are railed both by truck and also a little bit of railing. So think about that. It has actually fundamentally changed the construct and continues to put pressure on the cost management and cash costs, making it very difficult for us to cushion against the impact of inflation, as we have demonstrated over a couple of years. So you will then see the increase of 23.3% between the two halves in terms of our unit cost from 506 to 624 rands per ton, which is mainly driven by our lower domestic offtake at our Hrotechelek mine, coupled with distribution costs, because we have railed more and exported more than we have in the previous half. So thanks to our early value strategy and our market to resource optimization approach, which we've worked on over years as well, which is beginning to deliver value, and the team has continued to respond with agility and efficiency to opportunities in the export markets. So proven by our export sales, we've increased by 22% to 3.3 million tons. This early value strategy allowed us to realize a good price, you know, 95% uh, against the API4 index, which is in line with our set target we've already communicated with you. Yes, it is 2% below our record high of 97%, which we've achieved in the second half of 2023. But we continue to work hard. Now, turning to our energy business, the Synergy operations have delivered 339 gigawatts hour of wind energy, which is a decrease of 13.5%. Uh, this business has strong wind seasonality that we see, uh, whereby the first half of the year is always weaker than the second half. Even though, if you look at the two halves, and you'll see that uh, if you compare the 2024 to 2023, we can see that there's been an increase of 1.2% in wind energy delivered. But this variation of first half to second half is what we experience.